All right, so we are through 10 weeks of the NFL season, and I have not talked enough about the 49ers offensive line. So it's mostly just Brock, Christian, Kittle, like the skill guys on the outside. But think about how many moving parts the offensive line has had. So first time right tackle, starter, second year right guard, who's a day three guy, journeyman center. This was a second round pick, but now he's out with a turf toe, so John Feliciano. And then, of course, all pro, all everything. But he's playing on one leg. And honestly, after this game, and you can just watch this play, John Feliciano, he just doing the simple things, right? Um, Seals the defensive tackle, climbs to the second level. He's going to earn himself a spot in the lineup. He's going to be tough to take off the field. But uh, let's talk about the offensive line because we have to. So the 49ers, they haven't admitted it yet. Kyle Shanahan said, that Trent Williams was playing on something more than a lower ankle sprain, but this game, like that told me Trent Williams has a high ankle sprain. And and you can really tell, like in my opinion, he looked closer to like, 60% than he did 80%. How many times have we seen whoever 71's blocking give up a quarterback hit like that? And I'm not making excuses for him. I think it's just obvious that he's not healthy. Uh, Kyle Shanahan said, it was courageous for Williams to be out playing against Jacksonville. Uh, Trent said after the game that he didn't have any setbacks. I mean, it's not going to get healthier, obviously, when you're playing on it, but watch 71 right here. He can't push off his ankle. He can't go anywhere. See, Look at that. Watch his right ankle. Right ankle. That's what we're watching. He's putting no pressure, no weight on that. That's pretty telling to me. So one thing that the 49ers can expect to see, especially just with a young quarterback under center moving forward down the stretch here is they're going to get a lot of looks up front where who knows who's coming. So it's third down and it's third and Juwan. Works out well because the quarterback isn't flustered when he's under pressure. Accurate throw on the money on time to Juwan Jennings. But if we look at the other, the end zone angle, I should say. So... We got one, two, three, four, five. And then there's a safety hanging right here. There's another edge guy right here. They're going the Jags are gonna actually send one, two, three, four, five, with two dropping out. I wonder are the 49ers sliding the wrong way? It's supposed to be big on big, and it actually turns out well. So, kudos to Purdy again. Just playing on time. Offensive line picks up the blitz, picks up the stun. The player that's really done well is Christian McCaffrey. He's gotten better in pass protection, in blitz pickup. You can see there, he just knows where to go. Could have been a free rusher. Instead, picks up the blitz, first down. So, one thing that I've really noticed, especially in this game, just how athletic the 49ers offensive line proved to be in this game. So, I mean, to run all of these different type of motions, uh, different types of reverses, right? When they get their guys out in space, you have to be able to move a little bit. And obviously, I mentioned how Troy Williams is playing on one leg. When they move him, when he's on the move, he is just a special, special athlete. Um, but you'll also see, look at that, Drake, Jake Brindle, center. Looking for work out in the open field. On the end zone angle, Tron Williams, he's going to, I mean, he tries to cut off his guy, tries to get make the block, pushes him, and it kind of slingshots him into John Feliciano here. So watch the left guard. Only concentrate on him. Pulling, pulling, looking for work, looking for work. I love that, man. Forgot to show this in the offensive breakdown. Top of the screen. How... <laughs> How is that not an offensive or sorry defensive pass interference? He tackles him before the ball gets there. Look, tackle. Clearly makes contact. No call. You can see the sideline going crazy, jumping up and down. End zone angle. Just take him where he wants to go. He wants to pick a side, pick a half. Sure, that's fine. Run him up the field. Get him out of there. So Brock was able to operate from quite a few clean pockets, and I think Feliciano is a big reason why. All right, so again, 
the Jags are trying to confuse Brock Purdy before the ball is snapped. They're going to give him a look, but they're going to bring. You can tell that this linebacker is coming. Just watch how he's angled. He's blitzing. You're going to get a guy coming from outside of the screen. And the line actually does a really nice job of picking it up, right? So Burford stays square. Picks up a blitzing safety from depth. McCaffrey again. This is important. When the running back just knows where to go. Like that's sometimes as in pass pro for running back, knowing where to go is like 50% of the battle. And does a really nice job of that. But you see the left tackle, which is this is so weird to say. He can't really do anything. I think the biggest issue is just him having to retreat, right? Like he has no he can't put any weight on his ankle. So honestly, that was just the right play. You have to hold there because you do not want your quarterback to get killed. So I understand why Trenton did that. But if you look at everybody else, they do a really nice job of picking up the blitz. And that's what I really wanted to focus on. So, yeah, it's a holding call because your, your left tackle is playing on one leg. But the offensive line as a whole uh, did a nice job. All right, so this can't happen. We are watching the right tackle, top of the screen. This looks like the Eagles in the NFC Championship game, right? Like almost a redo. So let's go from the end zone angle. Pretty straightforward here. Two linebackers mugging. A gap. Four defensive linemen. Got wide nine. The other D lineman's not even in the freaking screen. That's how wide he is. I see him right there. So, what do the Jaguars do? Both the linebackers drop out. So now it's just a four-man rush. What are we doing here? Oof, that's brutal. That cannot happen. That is how you get a quarterback hurt. And, like, I got mad watching it just because I know how dangerous this is. So I can only imagine how the coaching staff felt about this. The standard, simple, right? Go get him. Be the aggressor. Be, the, be on the attack. Uh, just a, a really bad rep from McKibbitts. And there, there was a couple of those. There were a couple of those where I know he popped up on the injury report after the game. He got rolled up on. I'll show that play next. But McKibbitts didn't miss a play after that. And I wonder, and this might be the cynic in me, where I wonder if this was kind of like Drake Jackson all over again. And we might not see McKibbitts. We might see another guy get a chance at right tackle because of plays like that. But that that's inexcusable. Can't happen. And as you can see, the very next play here, what do the 49ers have to do? Now they're going to leave one of their best blockers, Kyle Uchek, in. And so instead of him running a route, now he has to stay and block. And then he gets to release later. So this was the only play where I could find where Colton McKivitz allegedly got rolled up on. And you can kind of see it. Like, it, it happens, but it wasn't as, like, severe as you might have thought. But I didn't see any other play. Like, I tried to comb through all the plays to see where, hey, maybe he did get rolled up on. But that was as as severe as it got. All right, here we go. Another third down. Third and four, I believe. Obvious passing down. So you know you're going to get a pass rush. You know you're going to have the pass rush pinning their ears back. And the play is dead before Purdy can really, like, scan the field. So top of his drop, free rusher. Again, like these are plays that can't happen. Okay, so four man rush, right? Nothing crazy. One, two, three, four. He's walking up, giving the illusion that he's going to come, but I. It doesn't really bother me, right? So, no. They do a nice job here. I think Feliciano, if we want to concentrate on him for this rep, he does a good job of making contact and still scanning on the other side. Not so much. So, he's going to go wide. He's going to go wide. And instead of pushing out, Colton McKivitz hangs on this guy too long. And that's how you get 44 coming off the edge free. Like, what are How? Seriously, like, how is that the, the thought process? So, Burford's a little late here. He's thinking, I'm responsible for 33 since it's empty. You're going to take the nearest threat, and that's 33. But as soon as he walks out, Burford should be doing what Feliciano did, where he's getting a hand on him and still scanning 
to see if 33 is coming. So that doesn't happen. And now if we just focus on McKivitz here, a lot of the same, right? We just keep passing, passing, passing. Just, mm, I know that has to be mind boggling for Chris Forrester to know that right here just doesn't even acknowledge 44. Free runner, and I mean, even a guy as mobile as Pro, uh, Brock Purdy isn't going to be able to escape that one. All right, so what the Jags do here is what the 49ers were doing a lot last year, where they put three guys on one side, they put Nick Bosa opposite of the quote-unquote weak link, and they're going to take advantage of their one-on-one -on -one guy. So if we watch McKivitz, he's going to have his eye on the edge guy and then rides him a little too long. He needs to pass him knowing that there are four guys to my left. Instead, um, he's late to recognize. Thankfully, he doesn't get there. Purdy does a nice job keeping his eyes down the field, scanning. And then he just makes a wonderful throw to Ayuk for a first down. But we are focused on the offensive line. And, like, McKivitz was late multiple times. And this one, to me, the reason that it's inexcusable is because, think about it. Like, the only threat is the edge rusher who's not even in the picture. You know that you have help over here. You know you have help right here. Still, he rides him a little too long. He should pass him right now. Everyone else does a good job. Burford does a job. Brendel's there to help. Covered. Covered. For whatever reason, though, uh, just a little late to pick 95 up. Pretty fortunate that that's not a quarterback hit. Yeah, there, there are some issues along the offensive line, and some issues that, you know, hopefully other teams aren't able to take advantage because while it, it's only five, six plays, uh, those are the game changers, right? We saw the one where Purdy uh, damn near got hurt because of a free rusher. So a lot to like as far as, you know, John Feliciano, uh, Jake Brindle out in space, but pass protection for Colton McKivitz continues to be an issue. He gave up the same amount of pressures as Trent Williams did in this game. Trent Williams was playing on one leg. Like, we can give Williams a pass for that. The same cannot be said for the right tackle. So something to keep an eye on moving forward down the stretch is how teams continue to load up against the 49ers, right? And not so much the 49ers offensive line as it is uh, the right side. I, I do wonder if once Aaron Banks comes back, Feliciano starts to rotate with Burford, much like Daniel Brunskill did last year. But even more curious to see if the right tackle – if it's going to be Matt Pryor, maybe my I would go with Jalen Moore just because, you know, super athlete, young, can get to his spots. But you're never going to you're never going to mistake athleticism for experience. And that's what Pryor is. So I uh, appreciate you watching. But I did want to get something on the offensive line because this is going to be the difference in the playoffs. So, again, comment, subscribe, tell me what you like about the video. So appreciate it. Thanks again, and I will be back next week to break down Tampa Bay.